Hi everyone and welcome to a new video by Miro Lessons. Today I'm going to show you the difference in image quality and performance between the A7R Mark II and A7S Mark II concerning the video capabilities. If you are curious to see the same comparison also for stills, I invite you to check out our comparison article on MiroLessons.com. In some example, I will show both the full frame and Super 35 mode on the A7R Mark II. This is because the camera gives its best performance in Super 35 mode, while the 7S Mark II gives the best performance in full frame mode. At low ISO, the only noticeable difference is a slight yellow tint on the 7S Mark II, something I also noticed with stills. It is also visible with artificial light. Otherwise, they both produce very nice 4K footage with great sharpness, details, and no visible artifacts. Both cameras have S-Log Gamma profile settings that allow you to record a very flat image with low contrast and a vast dynamic range. Here again, the performance is similar as far as the S-Log 2 profile is concerned. The minimum ISO available on the A7R Mark II is 800, on the A7S Mark II it is 1600. The A7S Mark II, however, also has the new S-Log 3 profile that gives more dynamic range and also more noise in the shadows. Note that the A7S Mark II has an important issue concerning S-Log that hopefully Sony will fix via firmware update. As you can notice, there is a big black spot in the sun, which is the brightest area of the sensor. It is something seen also on some Blackmagic cameras. You can use a ND filter to partially fix the problem, but depending on your exposure, it can still be somewhat visible. Rolling shutter is present but not too invasive in full frame mode on both cameras. However, in Super 35 mode on the A7R Mark II, it is significantly worse. In continuous autofocus, the A7R Mark II has a clear advantage in both good and low light conditions. It tracks the subject faster. In low light, the performance is worse and the IF hands more, but it is still better than the A7R Mark II, which in both cases is too slow in comparison to the subject. Both cameras feature the 5-axis stabilization that, however, is less effective than with stills. It works fine with static shots, as you can see right now. When you are moving with the camera, both cameras struggle more, and I would say that the A7S Mark II is slightly worse. Now let's turn to the low-light performance, where the A7S should have a clear advantage given the lower megapixel count and the vaster ISO sensitivity. In the first example, I am comparing with the 7R Mark II set in full frame mode. As you can see, the performance on the 7R Mark II decreases, especially from ISO 3200, in comparison to the 7S Mark II. If I set the A7R Mark II in APS-C crop mode, the performance improves and is similar on both cameras. Finally, both cameras have slow motion capabilities, but the A7S Mark II has some advantages here as well. They can both shoot at a maximum of 100 and 120 frames per second depending on whether you are in PAL or NTSC mode, but the A7S Mark II can record this in full HD, meaning 1080p, while the A7R Mark II can only do it at 720p, which is HD ready. The A7S also has an HFR high frame rate mode that saves the file in slow motion at 24, 25 or 30 frames per second. However, the bitrate is significantly lower, so it is better to use the standard movie mode. So, thank you for watching this quick comparison, I hope you enjoyed it, and as usual, don't hesitate to leave a comment if you have any questions. I remind you once again that you can also check out our comparison article on mirrorlesson.com to see full-size still images taken in various conditions. Thank you again, and see you next time!